He's alive! He's alive! Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. In this video, we are finishing up the saw vise. Uh, we're going to be doing the, the last little uh, finishing touches that we need to do, and then actually finishing it. <laughs> uh, so this should be enjoyable. Uh, if you'd like to build along, I do have plans for this on my website. I'll leave a link to those down below, as well as the full build series where I'm going into detail of every step needed to complete this, uh, this saw vise. So if you want to see that, there's links down below. But uh, let's stop talking and uh, dive into finishing this. Now one of the things that people have been telling me that I forgot to do or I should do but haven't done is something that if you look at the plans was already in there. <laughs> but I need to actually put an angle on the top of both of these. Uh, this way when you're cutting with a file you're not going to be running into the corners of this as much. Um, and also some people like to put a bit of an angle on the file. Um, so it's good to taper those down. It just makes it a little easier to work with. So what I'm going to do is grab a scrub plane. This is a plane with a heavy camber on it. I have a video on how to make this out of any pretty much any old junk plane. It allows you to take off a large amount of material uh, fairly quickly and without much effort. And so I'm just going to go at this. And I could draw out lines for where that is, you know, the right angle for the top and bottom. But there's no real reason to because this whole thing is done by eye and it's really not going to make any differences if it's off a little bit. Uh, so I'm just going to keep going on this at about 45 degrees and uh, take it down close to where I want and I'll come back with another plane and smooth that all out. So let me go to town. And then when it comes to these verticals, you have to be careful. If you go straight across on them, you're going to be getting a lot of tear out. I'm going to be getting some tear out as it is, but if you skew it to about a 45 degree angle, then you can go across the tops of these and bring them down into something that's coplanar with the top. And then we can come back with a plane and smooth it out after that. Get rid of all the marks from the uh, scrub plane. Nice and smooth and ready for work. Flip it around. Do the same thing on the other side. The reason why I'm waiting on this until the very end is that number one, it's easier to do when it's all together as opposed to being separate pieces. Number two, it's easier to see the two angles when you're comparing one to the other. So I did this side, and now I want to come over and do this side until it matches that one. And your eye is very good about comparing and contrasting the two and picking out which one needs some more work. There you go. Now we have both angles good. So when I grab a file, I can actually tip it a little bit one side to the other. Makes it a little bit easier for some of the functions. Also allows your fingers to get a little closer to the plate when you're going back and forth. So next we're gonna take this apart and then finish it. Um, for finish, I'm going to be doing a two-step approach. Um, first of all, you know, boil the linseed oil, but second, we're gonna change things up a little bit. So um, let's take it apart and uh, get it ready for finish. So after taking it apart, I'm gonna grab a block plane. I'm just gonna go around all of the edges, anything that's sticking out, anything that's sharp, just kind of smooth it off nicely. I'm not looking for anything particular, I'm not looking for anything spicy, just smooth to the touch. Make it feel better than it was. It doesn't take that long, as long as you go with the grain. And with a block plane, adding a nice little chamfer to corners is so easy and yet so rewarding. So the first step is boiled linseed oil, and this brings out the color. This is basically just there for the appearance. Um, now, if I were just to be making this for my own use in my own shop and I wasn't making videos, I probably would just do boiled linseed oil and paste wax. Um, it's going to get dull and dirty over the years, but oh well, it's a shop tool. Um, but because I'm shooting videos and I like things to look a little bit better and this is going to be getting a lot of um, metal shavings on it, I want to protect it a bit more. So rather than just doing paste wax and boiled linseed oil, I'm going to do a boiled linseed oil and then I'm going to bring in a poly finish to give it a little bit of a protective finish. Whereas this boiled linseed oil just gives it the uh, appearance I want and brings out the color in the hickory. Also, the boiled linseed oil, when it hits these walnut pegs, just turns them almost into ebony. They look jet black and beautiful. When it comes up here, I'm going to stay away from the cork. I'm just going to rub up against it. I don't want to get any on the surface itself. 
um, because in normal use I'll actually be taping it down, so no reason for that. So, smear it on, and the reason I'm doing this with hand um, as opposed to with rag is number one, I enjoy it. Number two, this is homemade boiled linseed oil. It's not the store-bought stuff. If you're gonna get the store-bought stuff, uh, put on a glove. It's got other things in it you just don't want on your hands. So let me finish up this application of BLO, and uh, then I'm going to let it dry uh, until it's dry, for the, dry to the touch, wipe off any excess and I'll bring you back when I'm ready for the next step. Then after about 15 minutes, I'm just gonna come in and wipe off the excess. Um, I'm not gonna wait for it to cure or dry. I'm just using it for its color, bringing out the warmth in the wood. So it's not gonna take that much at all. And once the rag starts to get fully soaked, you grab a new rag and keep wiping. Then I'm gonna let this sit for probably three or four hours and then come back and uh, start with the next finish. Um, I'll be letting it sit until it's dry to the touch, which uh, that's the actual key for when to take it off. Well, I'll actually let it sit until it's dry to the touch. It's usually about three or four hours, um, though sometimes I'll just wait for six because I've got other things to do. So, yeah, I'm gonna set this down, wait until it comes back for dry for the touch, and then show you the next spot. Okay, so I'm gonna be using Wipe on Poly now. This will give it a bit of a finish, and I'm not looking for a really high class, high shine finish. I just want something that's protective, so I'm only gonna be putting on three coats, and I will sand in between the second and third coat. So I just wad up a sock and use that as my pad. Um, I know a lot of people out there will be like, oh no, there's gonna be lint in that, and a little bit, oh well. Not that much. But the nice thing about this is you just wipe it on you let it cure, you try not to get a heavy amount anywhere. Uh, this is a, a, a polyurethane then distilled with mineral spirits or white spirits or spirits. They get called different things in different places. Um, I have a video on, uh, on distilling that, but it's just basically a 50-50 mix. Wipe down all surfaces and let sit. I'm not going to hit the screw because I'm gonna be covering that in paste wax in a little while to uh, help it move through the vise a little bit easier. So I'm basically gonna go until this is, I can't feel anything more on here. It feels nice and dry, and that's when I'm going to put a second coat on. Um, nothing particular between the first and second coat. For the third coat, I'm gonna wait until it's a good bit more dry, and I'm gonna hit with 400 grit, but I'll show you that in a minute. The second coat is dry. I can't feel any moisture on here at all. There's no touch to it, and when I put sandpaper on there, I'll get this fine powder. I don't get any gunking, um, and so that's basically what I'm looking for. Next thing I wanna do is just, Touch all the surfaces with the sandpaper. I'm using this 400 grit um, sandpaper. Just gonna smooth it all out, get any of the burrs or pilling on there. And then I'm gonna come back in, hit it with one more coat of poly, and she'll be done. So now that the finish is all done, uh, the only other thing I need to do is oil up these threads. And so I'm just gonna fill this. And you might notice that there was some chip out here. Uh, that's because the grain, uh, well, the grain's running this way, but across the, the rings here, you're gonna find places where it tends to pop out. Um, and I like to actually use those spots as a kind of like a reservoir for uh, the wax so that as it's used in the future, um, those are spots where it kind of saves the wax and uses more. So now that the wax is on the threads, we can install the screw and fit this whole thing together. Now we have a functioning vise ready for use. So let's stick a saw in it and see how well she goes. So then for use, we can slide it in and I can set it up so that the teeth are the right height that I'm looking for above and I can tighten down one of the screws. And it's basically ready to go. And I'm tight from here to here, but there's a little bit of slop over here. So that's when I can use the other screw and tighten up this side. And so we're good to go. And then this may be a little loose in here. So I can always clamp it in the jaw and make this really nice and rock solid. Just like that, we have it ready for sharpening. So now I need to do some videos on how to sharpen. So there you have it, uh, it is done, it is ready for functioning. I'm planning on doing several videos here soon on sharpening and the things I do and actually playing with this and experimenting. It's going to be a lot of fun and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. If you'd like to see the plans on it or see more information, I'll leave a link to that down below as well as a link to some of the tools I may have used. And uh, yeah, 
So that's about it for this build. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can keep doing this. Uh, thanks for giving me the, the ability to put uh, more information and detailed videos out there. If you'd like to help out with uh, Patreon or just say thank you, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe, and I do put out uh, videos on my second channel where I talk a little bit more about things that are going in the shop, videos that I'm planning in the future. If you'd like to see that, my second channel is right here. So that's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day.